How's it going ladies and bruises? I'm Bobby Sixkin and welcome back to Pyre. Now in the last episode we lost our first match and it just happened to be the Liberation right? which is pretty much the most important match that we fucking lost. I'm pretty fucking annoyed. Let's talk to Ruki, shall we? You thought Ruki was trying to get your attention but soon realised his attention is fixated on someone else. Might I assist you with something there Mr. Greentail? Ruki has never struck you as the sort to ever be lost for words and yet... Oh, we saw this. I'm pretty sure we read this. Yeah, it's the hat one. Okay, we already did that. Let's just uh, continue our journey then, shall we? Because we got to get all the way back to the fucking liberation right to actually have a chance at liberating someone again. It was our own fault. We should have tried to liberate Ruki the way it was meant to go. You once again find yourself amid the quiet nooks of the Moonlight Alco. Here you can await the time until the stars deign to shine for you again. The Beyond a Crystal Six Tezo. Really? Why? Okay. Tezo, you're going to be enlightened. Apparently. No, I don't have anything for you, Tezo. You're good. You'll be fine. One of her trials? I dare think I remember something of that imp. He certainly stood out from all his ilk. Although, that really's not saying much. Let's bring him forth. Tizo soon appears in heat of the summons. Tizo seems prepared for whatever lies ahead. It's been I haven't used Tizo since the very beginning. Hopefully, I think I remember Tizo being pretty good. Except for his attack is the one that suicides, which is good, but if he's alone, not so much. He can't fly though. The apparition Sandra appears and unfastens her mask. Listen well, imp. He wants it to me here. Tizo indicates his understanding and is prepared to begin Sandra's trial. You know the formalities, of course. Show me then what you've learnt thus far about the rites here in this trial. It shall be just you, my beyonders, and your lovely reader. Let us see now how you fare. Alright, here we go. Tizo's gonna get the chance at freedom. Oh shit! Oh shit! Come on, come on! Alright, here we go. Fucking bitch! Oh dear. We're doing worse and worse at this all the time. Some characters are a lot easier to use than others. Tezo's only with 15 on a score, that's a shame. There we go. This little hop thing's actually pretty good. It seems to throw them off a little. Doesn't have much stamina though. Or, or his stamina doesn't regenerate very quickly, one or the other. Shit! Fuck it, fuck it, come on. You got a long way to cover. Gotcha. Fucker. There we go. Okay, that went easier than most, to be fair. Not too bad. Nicely done, Tezo. Maybe I should have been using you more. Tizo is excited to have completed Sandra's challenge and awaits her approval. A worthwhile effort, Imp. Your performance was sufficient and you passed my test. Your predecessor may have well approved. Thus, congratulations are in order to you and your lovely reader. Now farewell. Awesome. Maybe we can free Tizo instead. <laughs> Although I think he's quite happy just hanging out here. To be honest. Tizo is happy to be back and wonders what it is that Sandra granted you. You take a look at the new artifact in your possession. Hoob's wing. Tizo's flutter and zip ability cost less stamina than usual. That's good. That's real good. We're going to put that on. Let's bide our time. You have returned to the place of respite. Please make yourselves comfortable such as you can. We are at the mercy of the stars, but I expect they shall shine bright again in time. As for me, I shall return by then, for there is something I must do. There from atop the sacred mountain, you gaze down into the abyss that is the downside. 
You wonder what the, when the stars shall align themselves once more. There upon the sacred mountain, you and your companions once more await the night the stars begin to shine again. The plan of which you're all a part of is set in motion. The Commonwealth, a nation that stood for almost a thousand years, is in turmoil. If your companions return there through the liberation rites, what sort of place shall they be coming back to? Many moons pass. One evening amid a downpour, with no interest whatsoever in relenting, Volfred requests everyone to convene. You understand, he has an announcement of some sort. Soon everyone is assembled and Volfred regards the group. Everyone, there is an aspect of our plan which I have not talked about with you at length. Look around at your companions. What do you see in them? He lets the question hang in the air a moment. I'll tell you what I see in all of you, in all of us. I see in all of us a living vision of the eight scribes themselves, each one among them hailing from the different tribes which later formed our commonwealth. My observation does not come from pompousness, I think. Rather, I believe the scribes themselves desired, or shall I say desire, such a course. Together, they created all of the ceremony, of which we are now a part. The exiles liberated through their rights went on to found the commonwealth, based on their values and their teachings. Thus, an instrumental aspect of our plan is to embody the spirit and the culture from which the commonwealth arose so many centuries ago. That way, when we're all united on the other side in solidarity, the people shall see that we reflect the values they yet cherish in their hearts, not merely our own. Anyway, we are still missing one key representative on behalf of Molten Melithe, and I happen to know a certain bog dweller who I think shall fit the part most splendidly indeed. He motions for someone to approach. A certain bog dweller slithers forward, you recognize her straight away. It is my pleasure to introduce you to a dear old friend of mine whom I believe you've met. Welcome to the Night Ring, Nightwings. Bertrude. The bog dweller called Big Bertrude utters something guttural by way of greeting. We are to understand that you require further aid from us. Yes, dear Bertrude, the time has come. Bertrude here is far and away the most accomplished alchemist whom I've ever met. You soon will find that she knows much about the rites as well. Bertrude looks you and your fellow exiles each in turn. We frighten ye, apparent. Everyone is silent as Bertrude searches their expressions. Then tremble, small ones, and hold well thy tongues, lest we remove them. She takes her leave without another word. Please excuse Bertrude's blunt manner, I guarantee she shall more than make up for it. Everyone disperses, it seems now that the rank of the Nightwings are complete. Bertrude joins. Now then, my boy, perhaps you've noticed that the stars are bright once more up there behind those stubborn rains. Meaning it is time we got back to business. Indeed, once more several stars shine bright within the cold and storming sky. Choose our path. Haub. Oris. Yormir. Okay, let's do Oris. Challenge the fate. Yeah, whatever. A record against the fate is 1 and 0. Seems good to me. Let's get to it. So we're going against the fate again. Adversaries or no, I hope Delbert and Elmer have been holding up. Seems they've been through quite a lot. He then shares with you what details he's attained of your next adversaries. Delbert Oldheart, an adversary who showed you respect and even generosity. Despite his advanced stage, he also made for a formidable opponent. He and his son. The so-called Elmer the Helpless, ever present at his father's side, he was abandoned as an infant before Dalbert found him and raised him as his own. Dalbert told his son everything he knew of his cultural heritage, as an ancestor of one of the Alpha Chiefs, thought to be descended from Yormir Minimane himself. However, his more vocal attempts to preserve old Kerr traditions in the Commonwealth often fell on deaf ears, or even roused the anger of officials. One day he insisted on celebrating Fang Song against the wishes of his family. His family's caution was well founded in this case, and he was taken into custody. As for Alma, as his father was led away, he put up enough of a fight to where he wound up sharing his father's cell, and soon enough, his sentence. In the downside, their faith brought them in contact with a pack of spiritual curs residing in Yormir Valley. In time, they became acquainted with the rites, and helped to revitalize the long-struggling triumvirate known as the Fate. They have since struggled, at times flirting with freedom, though seldom getting within striking distance, yet still, 
They longed to find a way to return to their ancestral home and family. Poor Delbert. Seems like a decent enough sort. Same for his son. In any case, we'll see them soon enough. Let's get some rest for now. You bid Hedwin a good evening. It is too late to take flight, so you make plans to rise at dawn to continue your travels. Who we got to talk to? Oh, yeah. You find Big Bertrude looking about the black wagon in a disapproving way. She fixes her gaze on you. Her expression does not change. Mm, such a clutter. Added to this wagon since we looked upon it last. Unsightly. We remember thee from our abode and flagging hands. Then thou must be the reading one of whom Sandalwood referred. She moves in close, studying you. You recall that the mere touch of a bog crone of the southern bogs can induce paralysis or worse. That one such as thee can extract meaning from that tome. Twas a feat we wish to witness for ourselves. Thy flesh has seen but the smallest fraction of the years which ours withstood, and yet we are expected to believe that thou canst understand the Book of Rights. Then she backs away, for someone else has joined you. Hail, Bertrude, madam. Is everything to your liking at this time, or is there something more which you require? We have been unable to locate a supply of rotworm gizzard extract among thy belongings. Other than that, we shall lodge no complaint at present. Is it possible that Volfred has a small supply among his possessions here? If you would care to accompany me, we may yet procure some. That would be agreeable with us. Then after you, madam. As they depart, you think you see the lone minstrel nod his head your way. Cool. Let us continue. It's time to fucking win some battles already. You rise early that morning, though Bertrude's already awake. She scowls at you. Good morning, reader. Bertrude, I trust your stay has not been too uncomfortable? Nay, Sandalwood. The comforts of this place are not for us. Fly us forth from here to lower ground. Let us get on with all of this. The reader here shall do so. Once the group is ready, I thank you for your patience. I imagine she's going to be really good. I don't know why, but I think she's going to be really good. I think because we played against the Bog Crones and they were really powerful. Soaring far above the Sclorian shore, you notice Pamitha gazing down at the frozen cliff below. That damn place down there. I like it least of all, I think, among everywhere we've been. I'm thankful that there's been no reason to return. It reminds me of my home is all. The high wing remnants. We grew accustomed to the thinner air amidst the cliffs that breach the clouds above your commonwealth. But it was not the nicest place. Little wonder that my sisters settled for a rather warmer base of operations than this land, there by the nest of Triesta. Anyway, I'm pleased to spend as little time as possible near here. Let's fly on by and go about our business. Let's indeed. We gotta sit down and do some shit. The whole Kavoris, it has drifted here upon the sea for longer than one might expect. Perhaps you've already read of the doomed ship's demise and the embrace of the unfathomed plunes. Some say it was the sea itself which preserves the ship's remains. Hidden properties within the water. Sea creatures binding together ruined planks of wood. Those such as yourselves and the fate know another truth, I gather. The stars would not align over the wreckage if it did not have greater significance than it first appears. May you have good fortune there during the coming rite. Alright, where do we want to stop? Pursue your vocations there. Find something of value. Well, let's land there and see if we can find something of value. You touch down at the Sea of Solace, where you first encountered Sir Gilman and the Pyrehearts. You soon shall carry on by sea, though for now you have some time to spare. Who are we talking to? Bulford. Bulford is poring over the copy, a copy of the Book of Rights as you approach. He looks up at you and smiles. The Road to Freedom, written in a book that hardly anyone believes exists and fewer still can read and comprehend. Sometimes I marvel how absurd all of this is, my boy. Tell me something though, I've spent much time considering the book, but no one so few with whom I could discuss it in much detail. You've had some time to turn through it by now, so what do you think? Worth all the fuss? It's fascinating. You tell Volfred that the book fascinated you, and you've never seen anything quite like it. He nods slowly as you describe your experience with it. I share the sentiment. To have it in our possession, a genuine artifact from a forgotten time, how much of it is exactly true, and how much of it is the scribe's retelling of events. I find it endlessly fascinating to consider, I must admit. He puts away his copy of the book with care. 
It is amazing that these volumes have survived all this time, I think. Whatever they are made of has withstood the ravaging effects of time quite well. And the ideas there contain, they remain rather provocative as well. To think that the Commonwealth disavows of their existence of this book, despite official recognition of the eight scribes. Although the reasons why they are there, written plain, how fascinating that the secrets have been kept for all this time. Anyway, left to excuse me for my extracurricular interests in its teachings. I used to teach a version of its history. To have access to the real thing has brought me some small pleasure. Let us be certain to preserve these volumes for whomever shall be next to use them. He turns his attention to other matters and bids you a good afternoon. Let us explore Ragged Rock. Something about the murky waters of Ragged Rock gives Pamitha a strong intuition to explore the sea. Explore the area, sorry. Together you set out to take a look. I'll take along, I could use some air. There seems to be nothing in, a particu in particular in the vicinity, but then Pamitha raises her voice. Just a moment, Rita darling, I think I found us something. The object in question is lodged deep in the ground and bears the mark of the rites. You sense you may be able to secure its contents, but the mystic wards will not be easy to undo. Uh, we have to do our vocations though. Ah, fuck it. Let's open it. You focus all your mental faculties on the mystic wards sealing the box's contents. Soon you're left exhausted, but the box's lid unfastens. Inside is a talisman, placed there perhaps by one of your predecessors in the rites from ages past. Fairy spirit. After bearer banishes an adversary, spawn a moon drop, which briefly grants infinite stamina. That's pretty good. Probably won't use it, but still. The Hulk of Horus. Alright, finally gonna get a right done. And like make up for our huge failure in the last episode. <laughs> That's what I wanna do, make up for our huge failure. Because it was pretty huge. And failerific. Hey Pamitha. You find Pamitha by herself again, though her expression has grown darker than her custom. Leave me be, would you, Rita, darling? I'm trying to get some good and proper moping done here and you're distracting me. Leave me be, Rita. Just leave me be, leave me be. You don't want to know what's lurking in my heart or my mind. What you'll find there isn't pretty. Yet something about her thought process is different to you now. You know that with her conditioning, she can resist your scrutiny. But now her thoughts are laid bare to you. See what she's thinking? Pamitha seems to be inviting you into her thoughts. You remain here, in that lonesome space with her. What is it going to take, I wonder, Tamitha? Shall I just go ahead and kill them all? Would that be proof enough, perhaps, about my loyalties to you and our sisters? Perhaps I ought to start with this one right in front of me. The bond between you severs and Pamitha opens her eyes and stares at you. Then she smiles sweetly and gives a gentle laugh. You see, Rita, darling, my thoughts are rather cumbersome at times. But do not fear. I have them well under control. Still, thoughts being the loathsome thing they are, I nonetheless cannot fully suppress them. She exhales and looks at askance. You know by now why I'm in this mess with all of you. You could say I lack Tamitha's sense of commitment, her zeal. She lives only to see your nation overthrown, or something worse, if she could have her way. Centuries of conflict can be quite emboldening that way, especially when one's sister's leading cause of death is Commonwealth Forged Steel. Wielded with utmost mercy, utmost of mercy, of course. Well, I had little patience for the senselessness of it myself. Became a bit of a pariah, I suppose. I knew Tamitha was going to get herself and the others killed someday. So when she was to fly out on this one big mission of hers, I had other arrangements made. But after she was caught, your people didn't exactly uphold their end of the bargain. I knew there were such risks, of course, and yet, a chance is still a chance. Tamitha was clipped and cast down. A mercy, they called it. I didn't see it that way. And in my growing protests of her treatment, I was soon enough to follow. She falls silent for a while. I haven't yet decided if I entirely regret my actions, but I do seek Tamitha's forgiveness, and wish that she could see my thoughts for what they are, as it seems you can. Then she might realise our nation's people have much more in common than she knows. Sometimes I wonder which of them is stupider. She brushes past you and out of the wagon for now. We're learning a lot about... Well, everybody, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The usual. Talky, talky, talky. We only got $8. Jesus fucking Christ. We're pretty pov right now. $8. Fey cast the aura? We don't even have Fey anymore. Jesus Christ. Nah, I'm not interested. 
Let's commence the right. Let's do this. Though the now familiar surroundings of the Hulk of Horus made preparations faster than before. The stars are already aflame by the time you and the others are gathered. Here we go. You ready, Jadario? Our adversary is a known quantity. I'm prepared. You wish them all good fortune in turn. Little else is said and together you watch with the celestial harmony in calm and silence and await the fate. Okay, so this is like permanent. What does this one do? Plus eight hope. Makes him return faster after banishment. I'm not sure that's. I think that'll be fine. More cunning and quicker to react. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that. Plus eight quickness. I don't want that either. That sounds bad too. Let's just roll with what they've got there. My overconfidence is what got us killed last time. That and the fact that they could fly. That was bullshit too. I kind of want to try a big bird trick too. The much vaunted reader has returned. And it would appear his ranks grow stronger. Consorting with the bog prone Bertrude, are we? How very strange that you befriended her. At any rate, your adversaries in this right shall be the fate. Put out their flame and walk the path to liberty. You got it. <laughs> Greetings once again, O oh Nightwings. We took to heart our painful loss to you last time, yet perhaps the outcome shall be different this time. Stand ready, Alma. Yes, Father. We shall give them our very best. We can take them. Who's up for this one? Good question. Looks like Bertrude's in. Hold a moment, reader. The crone Bertrude slithers forth, wearing the raiments of the rites. Now that Bertrude is among our ranks, it would be best if you became familiar with her repertoire. You have no obligation to make use of her abilities, of course. Good Bertrude, please show the reader something of your aptitude. We expect thou shalt soon be inclined to bring our sorceries to bear. Long have we studied the, these rites of thine. Let us show thee what we know of them thus far. Okay. Whoa. That uses all of his stamina. Now I have to wonder what became of her accomplices. Of one Whoa. in particular. You watch yourself around her, reader. None are sentenced into exile without sufficient cause. Release B while flashing the power blast. Like there. There we go. She's really good. I totally want to use her. Now then, reading one. Know that our freedom is of little consequence to us. We side with ye because of Sandalwood, because of his plan. We shall aid ye in the rites, and we shall aid ye in that plan. Thus, we are at thy disposal, and await thy bidding. I want to use her, but we need some, like, um, we need some sure things to go with her. Uh, do I have a talisman for you? I'll give you that one because it's there. But yeah, we need some sure things, so Rookie. Gilman. We got this, people. Let us stand together now, my son. Always, father. I am ready. As long as we got Rookie and Gilman, we got this. Nice. That's how we do, Gilman. You got this. Rookie's just too damn good for you, son. They pie is awesome though, cause it's purple. Ha! 
Because the Worm Knight is badass, son. I'm glad he doesn't want to go home. Man, we are fucking these guys up. Oh, Elmer. I fear that I am soon to let you down once more, but I suppose this is not over yet, and so I shall fight on. Such a struggle it must be for poor old Dalbert and his witless son. Glory to the scribes. Gilman, you are a fucking beast out there. Oh shit, everybody's down. Yoink! Jeez, we fucked him up. We could have activated more of those. Their adversaries must be crying tears of shame. The ceremony is complete. Alas, that the scribes did not heed our prayers this night. Come, Elmer. We are needed here no longer. Boundless are the teachings of the scribes. Nice, those Titan Stars are giving us some power boost, man. They're nearly ready to max out. Thus does our grasp of the ancient sorceries grow ever stronger still. Right, what do we got? When Bertrude's Pyre is less than the adversary, she deals an additional five. That's really good. While Bertrude's Pyre is more, she deals an extra extra five. So, if you activate both, then you just do an extra five all the time. Well, I don't know. I guess we go less, because we start with less. We should activate both, though. Me thinks. We're starting with less though because of the Titan Stars. After thwarting the fate with ease, you return to the wagon to find Volfred and the Lone Minstrel in the midst of a conversation. Most strange, this one's star should be illuminated by now. This is not what I expected. Nor I, Volfred, sir. Then Volfred notices you there. Reader, Tariq and I observed a strange occurrence in the sky is all. It appears the star of Kaelmer Ropecaller is illuminated now. It is but another star, except our models and predictions of the cosmos did not anticipate this. Anyway, go see for yourself. I shall make the wagon ready in the meantime. Ooh, a new star? You see only a single shining illuminated star far above. It is just as Volfred indicated. Discern where it leads. Are we going to a new place we haven't been before? That's awesome. The rogue star. The dissidents. 2-0, oh, we're going to come fuck up the dissidents again. Whatever. They must really like us beating the crap out of them. Then they are summoned to the Isle of Kalmar, deep within the Deathless Tempest. Have you been there before, Tariq? So long ago, I scarce recall that time. Only the scent, it is the place from whence the creatures native to this land sprang forth. Reader, let's not concern ourselves with superstitions held about that place. We'll set forth at dawn, and soon see for ourselves what we make of it. Sounds like a do. New bunch of pages. Sir Gilman wants to talk. You find Sir Gilman searching intently for something or other. His eye is shut tight, his brow furrowed in deep concentration. He acknowledges your presence in the most minimal way possible and continues scanning the environment. You shall have to forgive this knight's impertinence to you, Master Reader, for he is on the hunt at this time. Using his acute sense of hearing, which is much more acute whilst underwater, but she'll have to suffice in this case. He shall track down a most elusive character. A character who has eluded this knight time and time again. And from what, and from whom this knight seeks to learn still superior evasive strategies, applicable when he may, when next he may conduct the rites. Hold, is that? You have no idea to whom he's referring, when. Stick it up, worm, you're caught out. Could have wrung your neck just now, you know. Ah, oh, this knight has failed again! Alas, Master Ruki, once more you have outwitted this poor knight and outmaneuvered him. Please, you must reveal the secret to your speed and cunning. Take it easy, chum, you're not half bad yourself. Besides, 
I was getting pretty sick of running circles around these slow pokes before you showed up while we are at sea. Do you truly mean that, Master Rookie? But no, it cannot be, for this knight has never seen anyone as deft and fleet of foot as you. Certainly it must be advantageous to possess four feet, whilst this knight has but one. If so it may be called, and yet, we are born with necessary means, and we must all make do. Uh, look chum, you gotta stop being so hard on yourself already. You ever thought maybe you ought to give yourself a break once in a while? Never! This knight deserves no break, not while there is honour to be gained. He is merely a worm, one of roughly eight billion of his kind, thus he must strive to be remarkable and to exceed what is expected of him. Guess what chum, you went and did that already. I thought all you see Dominion types were just a bunch of meatheads who didn't care for nothing but a fight. But you've been downright decent, even made me break a sweat a couple of times out there, when I thought maybe we got someone quicker of his foot on his foot than me. The point I'm trying to make is, it's been good having you with us. I always say it's worth having someone quick around keep us on our, keep you on your toes. For a moment you wonder if Sir Gilman is about to weep. Sensing the same, Rookie immediately changes the subject. Now come on, you want to go another round or what? There's some good hiding spots outside where I can show you how we curs got the drop on unwary passerbys. In a very honourable way. This knight would be most honoured, Master Rookie. The two of them head off to further train together. You catch notice of the Book of Rights there in the wagon. The rights, which so stress trust and reliance on one's fellow exiles. The eight scribes likely didn't envision Sir Gilman and Rookie in particular as conductors of their sacred tradition. Yet perhaps theirs is the sort of kinship which they had in mind. Nice. They're making friends and they're my two favourites. That's awesome. Alright, well, I think we're starting to make up for the big loss last time, but we're going to have to wrap this one up for now. We did win a right, so that's good. In fact, we fucking destroyed them. And we got Bertrude, so that should be interesting. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. And we will take on the dissidents in the next episode.